I could film during a time of the day where the light doesn't change, but that might give you the idea that something in my life is consistent and I don't want to lie to you guys. Hey internet. When I was growing up, I always thought that I was smart. I had a lot of other self-esteem issues, but one thing I never doubted was my intelligence. I had people telling me that I was smart, I was getting good grades, I was even valedictorian of my high school. And I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm not saying all of this to brag. I'm saying this to illustrate a point. I thought I was smart, but what I didn't realize was that I was a small, narrow portion of smart. What I was was able to do school well. I would say all of the time how much I loved multiple choice tests and the majority of the standardized tests were multiple choice, so I did well on those too. What I loathed were the tests with the free responses. Those were always the sections that I did the worst on. When I was in school, what we were taught was how to do school. We were taught how to test well. We were taught how to memorize things and how to use the process of elimination. One thing that really wasn't focused on was our critical thinking skills and our skills of using creativity to solve problems. I was lacking in these skills so much that when I got to college one of my professors gave us a test in which we had to design an experiment to test a hypothesis and I froze. I had no idea what to do. I didn't know even where to start because that's not the type of problem I had encountered anywhere. I developed this analytical mind. I developed the ability to look at things and judge them on whether they were wrong or right and find the errors and analyze data that was already there, but I didn't develop the critical thinking skills to know how to get that data or how to start from a blank sheet and make something happen. So as I've been going through my program where I'm learning to become a science teacher, that's one of the things that I've been focusing a lot on is how to get these critical thinking skills into my lessons and how to start teaching kids to ask questions and how to create things in science and not just be able to do well on multiple choice tests because in the real world, that's not what you need to do. Anyway, I started thinking about this concept because over the weekend I had a residency weekend for my program where everybody that's in my classes gets together and we do some workshops and things to kind of get us started with the new semester. For one of the workshops, we had a person come in representing a makerspace that exists here in Baltimore. It's called Digital Harbor. If you're not familiar with this sort of maker revolution, maker culture, it is the idea that you learn things through building, through creating. So it has a lot to do with tech and a lot to do with computers and programming, whether it's working with actual circuit boards or printing things using 3D printers or doing code. And it's really hands-on and I think it's really fascinating for students to get the opportunity to do that because I think that's where they're going to learn about things. What it does is it encourages innovation. It encourages these skills in kids that won't apply to a multiple choice test. It'll encourage them to try to develop a new product or a new app or to do something to make their lives easier and to make people's lives around them easier. What they learn through making are going to be the lessons that help them solve the world's problems, not the problems in a standardized test booklet. I got really excited about this maker concept through this workshop and I started looking a little bit more into it and I was looking specifically for maker stuff for biology. And when I did that, I went through this spiral today on the internet of biohacking and grinders and all of this crazy stuff, but it's amazing to see what these people are creating just because they're curious and they want to figure it out and they don't know what they're doing and so they get the raw parts and they put them together. And interestingly enough, I was just having this conversation with Paula. She was talking about building a computer and I was thinking, I have no idea how I would even start to do that. That seems so difficult. And then she reminded me that there is a thing called Google and that hit me like a ton of bricks because duh, like you have that resource there. We have this endless resource of people helping other people figure things out by putting this information out there. And worse comes to worse, you make a mistake and you do something wrong and then you just have to do it again. I realize now that there's a lot of different points in this video and I maybe should have made it more concise, but another thing that I was thinking about is that I am an analyzer because of my experience. That's what I've learned to do. And when I was growing up, I thought I was so smart that I was going to be an innovator. I thought I was going to be one of these people that was going to cure cancer or make something that changes the world. And it's been really frustrating kind of coming to terms that that is not a toolbox of skills that I have. But I guess the exciting thing is that it is a toolbox of skills that I can potentially learn. 
It's just going to take some time. I've been working to develop my critical thinking skills. I've been working to develop my creativity. I'm never going to be a person that is out there building a new robot that helps you out around the house or that is designing a new genome to help us glow in the dark. But maybe I can start smaller. Maybe I can start with my own ideas and trying to make them happen. I don't know. Okay, so at the risk of overloading mine and probably your brains, I'm gonna stop here. So what do you guys think? Have you heard of this maker culture? Have you made anything from scratch? Do you consider yourself an analyzer or a creative or an innovator or any of these things? Do you feel like it's something that you can learn? I'm very much of the growth mindset, hopefully, so we'll see. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on this topic or topics. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.